Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm here with George Wheatman, who is the VP of Brand and Digital Commerce for Arcteryx. Welcome. Good, good morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, it's so great to be with you, George. As you know, I love Arcteryx. It's uh, my probably my favorite brand of all brands. Um, I've spent a lot of money with your company, and uh, it's <laughs> it's great to chat with you here. This isn't the first time we've been together. It's been great having you in my classes in the past as well. Yeah, no, it's awesome to be back. We we were just saying how much has changed in the last two years. So unbelievable, yeah. <laughs> the world has shifted many many times during that time. So when we get, uh, well, maybe we'll get things started here and just uh, tell us a little bit about your role um, as a VP um, and also a little bit about Arcteryx for those who may not be familiar with the brand. Sure. Um, so yeah, VP of brand and digital commerce. I've been in this current role for two years plus. I've been with the company eight eight plus years. Mm. Uh, my background is a, is in e-commerce and digital marketing. And so I started with Arcteryx more in a digital marketing capacity and then sort of overtook the the, the e-commerce and brand mm. side of the business. Yeah. Um, yeah, and for those of, you know, for listeners that don't know Arcteryx, we're, uh, we specialize in making, you know, uh, uh, very high quality uh, outerwear and apparel. Yeah. Um, we've been in business over 30 years, very much, uh, you know, an international brand moving to being truly global now. We're, we're selling in over 50 countries. Wow. Um, and, you know, strong momentum in, in many parts of the world. And, and so there's been, yeah, a lot of growth since I've been at the company for the last eight years. That's amazing. And and you're a, you're a local success story here in Vancouver. We are one of those those few local success stories, yeah, yeah. which is which is nice. Yeah. Um, and so when, when a lot of people think of Arcteryx, um, or when I think of Arcteryx, what I understand is uh, you don't really make like a jacket that allows me to do all my activities in that jacket, right? You're like, here is the most perfect jacket for that activity, and here is the other jacket for that activity. Am I right in that? You're right, and 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 I would correct you. So I would say, like, the, our, our line is very complex, because mm. we do make a lot of jackets, and we make a lot of product. Um, you know, in its simplest form, I describe it as like, we actually have an offering, which is actually incredibly versatile. Yeah. That's actually where we where we sell the most of our product, is, yeah. in, is in very versatile, um, you know, outdoor outerwear. Yeah. We also make very, you know, specialized sort of end-use, intended end-use product, whether that's for mountain running, or uh, skiing and snowboarding, yeah. uh, or alpinism, right. and then we also make very specialized sort of end-use products specifically for city. So right. the, the versatility piece is actually our our, our bread and butter. Yeah. But we're best known for you know having brought to market like minimalist like resolve design. What's resolve mean? You know, our Arcteryx is like obsessed. We're, we're kind of at this intersection of being like half the world knows us as an outdoor company and yeah. the other half of the world knows us as, as a design company. And, and we, we sort of play those things. We're both really that's we're both those things in our DNA. Yeah. Um, the, the word resolved are, you know, if, if you visit our, our design floor, it's literally, you know, like a crazy workshop where people are cutting things and there's sample sewers there and people are taking stuff into the you know like samples directly and to get tested and yeah that resolved is sort of that that final expression when when a when a designer feels like they've removed sort of as much as they can from the product in terms of minimalism to make it you know yeah this is this is working as best right. as it can that's amazing yeah and, and so when we think about arcteryx um and you kind of speak <clears throat> about design i mean design seems to be an integral part of the brand how important is design when you're actually marketing uh some of your products very important it's 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 one of the things that we like out of sort of three three to five sort of dimensions we, we try to show it's perhaps the most important i think you know what's interesting about um you know our genesis as a brand is we didn't start as an outerwear business mm. you know we started by making harnesses oh, the, wow. the original company was actually called rock solid yeah um and 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 then you know from harnesses we disrupted the market in harnesses uh came out with this vapor harness which was there wasn't anything like it in, mm. in the rock climbing industry we then moved into other hard goods including backpacks and sort of got really well known for this bora series of backpack yeah. and disrupted that industry yeah and then slowly moved into outerwear and as we sort of po like started getting into like shells and insulation yeah it was sort of just kind of creating disruption in different in different categories yeah. and that was all through the design process mm. we sort of there's always been this incredible like we build everything ourselves including including the machines that like we needed to do the designs oh really which is part of the reason we've always kept that manufacturing facility close to us in in um um, in New Westminster, yeah. So we manufacture in in thirty plus countries now because of scale, but we keep about you know ten percent of our manufacturing domestically here. Yeah. And a big part of that is so we can stay really close to that build process. Right. 
so that we can actually go to a factory and be like, well, you know, here's how you build it. Here's the full, <laughs> here are the tools you use to actually build it. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing that you've created some of the machinery that you need to get the product that you need that, yeah. to get the end result. We geek out. It's, it's, a, it's, <laughs> there's a, there's an engineering side to the brand, which is, which is fascinating. It's, it's a whole group of sort of like obsessive problem solvers. In the, in the world of outdoor apparel, is that something that would be common? it's it's certainly our niche it's 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 been like a major sort of point of difference for us as a brand um you know i think from a marketing point of view you know well before i came the, the brand always had a very sort of mysterious tone to it yeah. we intentionally sort of entered the outdoor industry in a disruptive way by being sort of that first outdoor brand to sort of take a black you know mysterious approach sort of impending doom kind of yeah. imagery, yeah. you know, try to figure us out. Yeah. You know, over over the last several years, it's been much more about trying to let people, you know, closer to the brand and okay. humanize the brand. Yeah. Um, but certainly that that design DNA has is, yeah. is been a major right. you know, point of our difference. Right. So when I think about Arcteryx, you guys have had some really successful campaigns over the years. What to you stands out from the consumer's perspective that you thought, oh, wow, that they really love that or they, they really they really got into that campaign? So I think historically we've been best known f for campaigns that that have that have you know differentiated us in terms of our our, our point of view of design. Mm -hmm. To be honest, most of our competitors sort of have directly copied that. It's I think it's difficult for for guests now to to differentiate between you know um, the sort of technical fabric that one brand is claiming versus right. another. Right. And I think the thing that we learned is that a lot of our guests wanted to kind of get closer to the brand of yeah. like trying to figure out you know how they can um, how we as a brand you know we started showing up as being you know fairly intimidating. That was the feedback we were getting. You know yeah. it was like not not everyone wants to tie into the sharp end of a rope or drop in right. you know yeah. you know and, and do hard lines. And even though we're going to keep building product for that end use. How do we be, how do we become more more inclusive as a brand? How do we humanize the brand? Yeah. So we launched. There was a problem solvers campaign that 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 we did about two years ago, mm. which was very much about sort of celebrating our point of view of like problem solving the world, and not just how we approach the design process, but yeah. how you know other designers and other disciplines approach design. And, and and that was it was it was a very it was it was it was a great campaign in the sense of like. There, there's a tribe of designers, yeah. whether they're architects or people working on, um, you know, third world problems, yeah. and and bringing that kind of design thinking yeah. like under one umbrella was was really yeah. powerful. That's great. Yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, when you look at trends in digital marketing, I mean, you've been working in this field for yeah. for a fair bit of time. What do you see uh, the future for digital marketers for Arcteryx or maybe maybe any brand in general? Yeah, it's. I, I think that's the. I mean, I think that's the key question. I mean, what a year it's been. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about this on the way drive on the drive down here. Actually, I would say there's three things that you know, if I was, if I was coming into the workforce, I, I'd be paying attention to. Okay. Like the first would obviously be e-commerce. I mean, clearly this this ten years of growth that we've had in the last you know eight eight to twelve months right. is real. Yeah, and it's not going away. Right. Um, and I think all brands are sort of scrambling to capitalize on that. I think the jury's still out, you know, what the ceiling's going to look like there. Uh, I think there's some learnings we could have from China and those markets. Yeah. But I would say that's clearly like, you know, that is going to be, that's going to continue to be a major growth sector um, going yeah. forward. That, that'd be the first, that'd be the okay. first thing. Can I just stop you yeah. there? So before we get into the second and third, you said there's some major learnings from China that maybe we can get an understanding of what are you referring to i mean we could go down a big rabbit hole here but i mean the the chinese e-commerce landscape has been very different from the yeah. rest of the world for for several years now yeah. you know it's dominated by large marketplace uh players there's actually very little brands that sell most of the e-commerce is sort of like you can imagine china's very much uh what the what north america would be if if you would have had amazon you know mate with facebook Right. right, the marketplace would be completely different here, yeah. and that's really what you have there. It's yeah. it's there's and it like eighty percent of e-commerce is going on on you know three to four big big platforms. Yeah, like WeChat, um, WeChat, Tmall, the, yeah. all the Alibaba ecosystem, yeah. all the Tencent, uh, yeah. JD.com. The the ecosystem is like there's an incredible amount of innovation there too. Mm -hmm. Every every six months it changes. Yeah, um, and so it's and it's very like the mobile adoption rates are you know much higher than anywhere else. Right. They've been able to scale mobile payment much quicker. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people sort of look to China to be like, you know, is that the future of where we're going? Right. I, I think to a certain extent it is. Like, I think there are some checks and balances there that are yeah. going to slow that down. But yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. Number two. Number two. Do you remember um, now? Uh, yeah. Number two, I would say... Um, 
would be around uh, sort of sort of sustainability in its broadest sense, and specifically sort of net zero and circular economy. Okay. I I mean cl- I mean there's no news here, right? I I but I do think that the COVID mindset. I think people coming out of COVID, they're we are clearly, you know, now that people have sort of learned sort of how vulnerable the world really is. Yeah. I, I think clearly we're going to be facing climate change, you know, as a, you know, as a group of humans yeah. in a, you know, on a small planet. Yeah. And, um, and I think you're going to see an incredible amount of innovation and disruption across all verticals. I think it's the most dominant, you know, conversation that's going to be, you know, the boardroom conversation of how do we get to net zero yeah. and make commitments there. Yeah. Um, which I think is really exciting. I think it's, you know, I haven't read Bill Gates's recent book, but I, you know, I'm, I'm keen to, I think yeah. he speaks a lot about like, there's a lot of opportunity there, you know, right. in, in that level of disruption. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's great. So that's cool. Yeah. And then, um, and then the third thing I, I, I don't know, I just take a, a kind of a step back would just be, I think the general sort of like wellness, you know, industry, mm-hmm. I, I think in its broadest sense, um, I, I think is, is going to go on a tear. You know, I, I think, People have learned a lot around sort of like some people. I, you know, I, I'm I'm fortunate. You know, my family. I feel fortunate to have not sort of had like like a terrible experience during COVID. Yeah. And yet, um, you know, I think everyone has paid more attention to just like slowing down a little bit. Yeah. Like what is you know I I don't think humans really want to go back to maybe what we had. Yeah. And this whatever these hybrid models look like. Yeah. I think are going to put like employees and sort of like health in general like. Yeah further forward yeah um and so are, are, is there any link to a theme of health and wellness and how arcteryx is going to communicate differently or how arcteryx is going to um, design their products differently um, can you tie that into how your brand is going to react to this yeah. you know long-term trend yeah i mean certainly i mean i mean like i would say that's a big part of my role like uh, other than obviously like leading a large team yeah. and 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 trying to unlock human potential i yeah. mean that that is arguably perhaps like my job yeah. is is to try to like you know create that path forward for us um and, and yeah I, mean, I think we're very well poised to to take advantage of a lot of those things we've yeah. got you know we've got tremendous momentum in our e-commerce business it's it's it's, it's, it's been going really well um we're actually really well situated in terms of you know our we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes of just you know circular economy and and, and mm. sustainability of the brand which i think puts us in a position to lead in some areas especially when you look at our footprint as a global brand yeah uh, a good example of that is you know we've been getting behind sort of used gear and the ability for yeah for people to you know to trade in yeah and um so that's a very exciting space for us um as well as sort of just transparency in our sourcing yeah and then i think you know on the third side i think it is like um it's i, I would certainly love us as a brand to like you know play, be playing more of a role there we the, one of the um sort of a major brand platform that we launched fairly recently is is this uh, platform called Outer Peace, mm-hmm. where we're really as a brand trying to celebrate like you know the the scientific you know benefits of spending time in nature on yeah. a regular basis, right. like both both like like intense like backcountry experiences, but also just this idea of just micro dosing. Yeah, and and I think those those sort of things are going to gain a lot of traction. In the woods. That's great. Yeah. So when you say microdosing, you're talking about like going for a walk in the woods for the afternoon type of thing. Yeah. Or it's interesting, you know, there's, there's a great book. Um, we actually signed one of our ambassadors is, is this, um, uh, an author and, uh, a journalist called Florence Williams. She wrote a book called uh, the nature fix mm-hmm. and she's explored this for the last several years. And it's, you know, it's fascinating. Like, like the microdosing for her is even people li- like most of us live in city, you know, e- even if we love the mountains yeah. or love the ocean, most of us spend most of our time in a city. Yeah. And there's there's so many things we can do in, in in city environments of just being able to spend like 20 minutes outdoors in the closest thing we have to natural settings yeah. is like has an, has an immediate like physical impact on yeah. us. I totally and, agree. And and it's it's the science is like there's a lot of science behind this now. Yeah. Uh, actually, in Japan, they have a whole they have a whole program called forest bathing, which is super interesting. Where they literally, you know, it's it's literally. Uh, and they've been able to measure, the, you know, the like the impact to, yeah. to uh, that's fabulous to people lowering their their stress levels. Yeah, so it's, I, I think it's, I mean, I think across the board, I think Arcteryx is well poised. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, that's great. Um, what are your thoughts on um, 
uh, I guess live streaming, something like Clubhouse comes on the scene, yeah. and you know everybody's kind of talking about that. Um, uh, in the in the COVID world, that's had a big impact. Um, is there an opportunity that you see for Arcteryx, or is this something? Is the idea of live streaming here to stay? I think so. I, I mean, I think. Look, I mean, the one thing about digital commerce is, uh, in fact, I'm doing a masterclass in a couple of weeks, and actually, one of the things I'm trying to get at is the biggest challenge with this space is that there's so much opportunity in the space. Mm. It's like you're just overwhelmed by yeah. choice constantly. Yeah. And um, and and it, it, it depends if you're trying to like there becomes an opportunity cost with like everything you chase yeah. and pretty much everything you chase has an upside. I would say, I mean, clearly, you know, video is here to stay, yeah. you know, streaming is here to stay. And yeah. and that'd be a good example of looking to China of where we're going. Right. And I think what's going to unlock that in North America is going to be 5G. Yeah. Um, you know, the flip side to that, I would say is that, you know, there is, if I take my kind of commerce hat off and I look at things from just like a consumer lens, you know, I, I think people are clearly overwhelmed now right. with, with like media and, 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 you know, tech addiction, screen addiction is a real thing. Yeah. It's, so I think you're going to see some pushback there and yet we're clearly fully hooked. So yeah. it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, as a parent, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty, you're I'm, aware of this. I'm aware of this and torn and torn on the issue, but yeah, streaming is certainly, That's certainly good. here to stay. Yeah. I look at Clubhouse and I'm like, I really want to get involved, but I'm like, I feel like either too much coming at me all the time yeah you know and it, and it does get overwhelming you're like well what what am i going to watch who am i going to look at you know and and it, it gets in, a bit intense sometimes yeah i mean i think the currency online you know it's been this way for a long time is sort of like right it's time on site and yeah. and i think we're the we're we're sort of reaching the bottom of the barrel on tactics to just like you know to keep people <laughs> tethered, <Engaged. laughs> tethered yeah. right and it's i'm not sure that's i'm not sure that's having a great impact on right. the world well, well I, I can assure you it's not right <laughs> uh and yet you know here we are we're all addicted so that's great yeah um, <laughs> you're right about that um, when we look at um customer service in digital marketing sometimes i think for brands it can get overwhelming you got people commenting and asking questions and publicly complaining on Google reviews or on your on on uh, just commenting on Instagram how does a brand like Arcteryx that's a big brand with a pretty big team how do you manage customer service from a digital perspective great question I, I think um, this is an area that we actually need to probably like completely transform our business we've mm. um, like a lot of brands we've 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 come from a very sort of wholesale channel you know background and and as we've been growing our vertical business yeah. both brand store expansion but also our e-commerce business like in that transition we need to transition our, our guest services model right which right now is 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 fairly it's on a pretty linear path of like in order to as our business scales we sort of add, need add more people yeah instead of leveraging technology yeah so i think there are going to be some really exciting technology unlocks like yeah. i mean i think things like chatbots and those sort of things i mean there's a lot of upside to yeah. to how AI, I think, yeah. is is going to help legitimately improve yeah. um, that that space. Um, in terms of, I mean, one of the most amazing things about just social media has been just the trans, like the um, the level of transparency it's driven right, right in the marketplace, and so it's actually allowed brands like hours that have generally relied on word of mouth to sort of float to the top right because people are it's easier to figure out like people's radar for bullshit is just way yeah. way way better yeah which is you know which i think is a good thing for yeah. the world the flip side is you know as we all know that that level of commenting and everything it is it's also creating an incredibly polarized world you know people are falling into their bubbles yeah. and sort of so there's 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 a force of evil out there on the internet yeah that, you know yeah. yeah is real okay i want to ask you two last questions uh, what is one thing that you think um, Arcteryx or your industry is doing really great that you think they or you guys should continue doing? And what's one thing that you think um, Arcteryx or the industry that you're in really should change and, and that, that really drives you crazy or that you think, here's, a, here's an opportunity we're not taking advantage of? Tough questions. Um, you know, on the first side, I think one of the one of the things that all, that attracted me to Arcteryx from, from the beginning, and I think uh, attracts like a lot of talent to Arcteryx, is that we've even though we were you know we're growing very quickly as a brand, and um, there's a lot of growth expectations there in in sort of in an apparel category. We've always taken the point of view of trying to put product into the world that has like real functional use. Right. That trying to avoid you know catching long like just short-term trends right and and trying to trying to intentionally you know solve problems in the world through kind of outerwear and apparel and product mm -hmm. 
and I think that's important. I think like I think in the long run, with the transparency there is in the marketplace, I think that is going to be what you know most consumers are going to gravitate to. Yeah. It's sort of very well constructed, well built product that yeah. has intention and it's it's thought through in the sense of like the impact it's having on the world. Right. You know, I think I, I think if anything, that's what I would love to see us you know just continue to just double yeah. down on as we grow. Yeah, that's good. Um, what would you like to see changed? I mean, I would I would speak to the. the you know, uh, to the industry at large, I mean, I think, you know, I, I wear two hats in my role, like on the digital commerce side and, and sort of playing a VP of brand yeah. role. And I mean, I w- it would be naive for any VP of brand to sit in this chair and not and not speak to like diversity inclusion, mm. you know, th- as a topic over this last, you know, 12 months. Um, the outdoor industry is incredibly white. Yeah. It's incredibly privileged. Yeah. Uh, Arcteryx is no different. And right. we have an incredibly long way to go right. to to show up in, in a way that I think really reflects actually like the brand that we are and, right. and, and the people working for the brand. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's, that's equally like it, it gets me really excited and it's, and, and it's equally challenging because, right. you know, I think to a large extent um, a lot of of people, including myself, we're, we're learning quickly, right? right. And, and, and we're playing catch up. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. Excellent. Well, George, it's been awesome to talk to you. I've learned a whole lot here and this has been a super interesting conversation. Wicked. Yeah. <laughs> we should do this again. Perfect. I'd love to. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for being with me. Cheers. 